Well, friends, I don't know if the devil went down to Georgia, but based on a recent court filing by Fulton County, Georgia, District Attorney Fawny Willis, it sure looks like some shady defense attorneys may have gone down to Georgia. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, there's been some interesting reporting in recent days about Fulton County, Georgia, District Attorney Fawny Willis's investigation of Donald Trump's Georgia state election crimes. And we've learned that Fawny Willis may have as many as 20, perhaps even more, but at least 20 targets in her sights, 20 different people who she is considering indicting. Of those 20 people, 10 of them are what we often heard referred to as fake electors. These are Georgia Republican politicians who signed fraudulent certificates falsely attesting to Donald Trump having won the Georgia state election when in fact he lost the Georgia state election. And these 10 fake electors, targets of Fawny Willis's investigation, are all represented by the same person, the same attorney. And Fawny Willis just filed a motion in recent days in court trying to get the judge to disqualify this attorney from representing those 10 fake electors. Here is the recent reporting from the Washington Post. Headline, Georgia District Attorney seeks to disqualify attorney for fake electors in Trump investigation. And that article begins, an Atlanta area district attorney investigating whether former President Donald Trump and his allies broke the law when they sought to overturn Trump's 2020 election loss in Georgia, asked a judge to disqualify an attorney representing some of the Republican fake electors who signed certificates falsely stating Trump had won the election in Georgia claiming the attorney did not tell her clients that they had been offered immunity deals in the case. In a court motion, Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis asked for attorney Kimberly burroughs Debro, who represents 10 of the alternate Republican electors, to be removed from any further participation in the case. Prosecutors claimed Debro committed an ethical breach by representing so many clients simultaneously, including electors who have made adverse claims against other electors that DeBro represents, which prosecutors say is a clear conflict of interest. The filing cites interviews Fulton County prosecutors conducted on April 12th and April 14th with some of the electors represented by DeBro, which DeBro attended. Quote, during these interviews, some of the electors stated that another elector, represented by Ms. DeBro, committed acts that are violations of Georgia law and that they were not party to these additional acts, the filing states. Additionally, in these interviews, some of the electors, represented by Ms. DeBro, told members of the investigation team that no potential offer of immunity was ever brought to them in 2022. So friends, let's talk about what this means. First, what it means for the attorney, Ms. DeBro, and then what does it mean for Fawny Willis's investigation? And perhaps most importantly, what does it mean for the timing of any possible indictment against Donald Trump or the other targets of DA Willis's investigation? First of all, for Ms. DeBro, it's easy. She could be disbarred. Why do I say that? Well, if these assertions in the court filing by D.A. Willis are true, are accurate, have no reason to believe they're not, well, what Ms. DeBro did is some big ticket ethical misconduct. First, if you represent somebody and the prosecutor who's looking to indict your client 
makes this incredible offer, provides this incredible potential benefit to your client, you know what? We're gonna grant you immunity. That means a complete pass, depending on the nature of the immunity, but essentially a complete pass. You don't have to plead guilty to anything. You won't be held accountable for any of your crimes and we will immunize you and you'll have to testify about the crimes of others. That is an enormous benefit to somebody who may be on the hook for being a defendant in a felony case. If Mr. Bro failed to communicate that enormous benefit being offered by the prosecutor to her clients, that is big ticket ethical misconduct that will certainly get you investigated by your bar counsel, will at a minimum get you sanctioned, and could very well get you disbarred. But then there's a second alleged ethical transgression by Ms. Debro. She's representing 10 clients, and some of her clients are trying to narc out, provide incriminating information about other of her clients. That is a direct actual conflict. And that requires an attorney to remove himself, or in this case, herself, from representing both of those clients because you can't have split loyalties, dual loyalties. You can't negotiate a deal on behalf of one client that requires that client to incriminate another one of your clients. You know, that's like an ethical breach 101. So if these assertions are accurate and true, Mr. Bro is in a heap of trouble as an attorney. What does it mean for the ongoing investigation that we are waiting for indictments to drop in, right? District Attorney Willis's investigation. Well, if Ms. Bro is kicked off representing all 10 of these fake electors by the judge, new attorneys will have to be appointed to all 10 of these fake electors, these targets of Fawny Willis's criminal investigation, those attorneys are gonna to have to develop a relationship with the clients, they're gonna to have to review all of the information to date, and then they're gonna to have to undertake to represent the interests of these 10 fake electors. And Fawny Willis presumably will have her team meet with each defense attorney for each fake elector once that attorney-client relationship is in place. And it may be that they will re-extend immunity to one or more, one, two, six, eight, who knows, of these fake electors to see if they want to take advantage of that benefit that Ms. Debro allegedly failed to communicate to them last year, back in 2022, and see if they can strike a productive relationship with some of these fake electors and develop them as testifying witnesses against other fake electors or against other possible targets of the investigation, up to and including Donald Trump. That will take time. Now, whereas several weeks ago, it may actually be a couple of months ago now, we all heard DA Willis say that her charging decisions are imminent, I think we may have misheard that to mean indictments are imminent. I know that was kind of the way I received what D.A. Willis said, but here's the thing. Her charging decisions may have been imminent. Her charging decisions may have already been made internally, but once your charging decisions are made, before you ask the grand jury to vote on an indictment, what you do often as a prosecutor is you then approach each person that you intend to charge, each person that you intend to indict and say, We've made our charging decisions based on the evidence. We're going to ask the grand jury to indict you. You have one final opportunity to come on board, to accept responsibility for your own crimes, to plead guilty. Maybe we'll give you a reduced plea or another benefit, a reduced sentence once you plead guilty and are sentenced. If you decide to come on board now to flip, to cooperate against the others about whom you have information, you have evidence. So her charging decisions may have been imminent, her charging decisions may have been made, 
and she may have been going through the process of you know communicating with each person she intended to indict to see who might want to plead and become a cooperating witness I will tell you friends nothing will get the attention of the target or targets of a grand jury investigation like hearing from a district attorney that our charging decisions are imminent in fact they've been made now what you gonna do so the fact that these 10 fake electors will potentially have new attorneys appointed to them that may actually result in more time before we see the Georgia State grand jury returning indictments against Donald Trump and others but I'd like to say we have nothing but time the reality is we are left to do nothing but wait until District Attorney Fonnie Willis believes the time is right. And the time will be right. You know, we got an indictment of Donald Trump in New York. There will be an indictment of Donald Trump in Georgia, I strongly suspect. And there will be federal indictments of Donald Trump, courtesy of Special Counsel Jack Smith. I'm sure of it. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.